Hi there, welcome to lesson number six. This is the lesson in which we finally cover the Black and Scholes and Merton theorem. So it's a pivotal lesson in our course. At the same time, the theorem is not the only topic we will consider. We will also discuss other very important aspects of our framework. For example, we will discover what is, at the end of the day, the rather nicotine derivative that, in this very basic second, we will use to switch from P to Q, and we will analyze the properties of this rather nicotine derivative. For example, we will try to understand what type of distortion we introduce in the model every time we change the measure. Because as we know, the two measures we are using, P and Q, are equivalent, so they agree on what is not possible, but for what concerns what is possible, they can give different probabilities. What we want to understand is, is it possible to quantify this difference? And luckily for us, in the basic framework, it is possible. So I will try to show you how we can try to quantify this part. Now, the rather nicotine derivative that moves from P to Q allows us, as we know, to solve what we have called the drift problem. We know that the drift may depend on the expectations of people, on propensities, on our background knowledge, and this introduces a degree of subjectivity that we don't want to play with. So, changing to the risk-free rate allows us to be in a more neutral situation. Now, what happens if you remove the drift? You might remember from the geometric running motion that there is a second parameter, sigma. Sigma is what practitioners call the volatility. Now, in our lesson today, we will try to understand how we can play with volatility. So I hope this will be a rather interesting lesson for you. I also hope that these video lessons are useful for you and that your attention span is actually better than the one of the only student that is here in this room with me. So let's start. Thanks to all the things we have seen together until now, it is now extremely simple to find out what is the appropriate Q measure, the risk neutral measure, that we can play with in the Black and Scholes and Merton theorem. It is just a matter of applying what we have considered so far. We start by considering the discounted price process as t tilde. Now, the stochastic differential equation of the price process is what you see on your screen, and it can be easily obtained by discounting the stochastic differential equation of the geometric brown motion that we are assuming to be the process representing the prices in our framework. We can then introduce the auxiliary process Wt, which is Bt plus mu minus r over sigma times t. This is clearly a Brownian motion with drift, in which the drift is actually equal to mu minus r over sigma. Now, but thanks to Cameron Martin, in the lecture notes you can read Gersanov, but for us Cameron Martin is already sufficient. Thanks to Cameron Martin, there exists a probability measure that we call Q, which is equivalent to our measure P, such that the process WT is a standard running motion. But if this is the case, then we can rewrite the price process as you see on your screen. The discounted price process S T tilde is then equal to a quantity S0 tilde multiplying the exponential of sigma WT minus sigma squared times T divided by 2. Now, what we can recognize in the quantity exp sigma WT minus sigma squared times T divided by 2 is an exponential martingale, is an exponential martingale of parameter sigma. So, the discounted price process is actually an exponential martingale. This tells us that Q is the risk-neutral probability. Why? 
under Q, we know that WT is a standard Brownian motion. And if WT is a standard Brownian motion, then always under Q, we have that the exponential of sigma WT minus sigma square over 2 times t is an exponential martingale. So it comes out that the discounted price process st tilde is equal to a value s0 tilde multiplying a martingale. So the discounted price process is itself a martingale. But what is the measure according to which a uh, discounted price process is a martingale, it is actually the risk neutral measure. It's one of the properties, it's one of the defining characteristics of the risk neutral measure. So the measure Q that we have found, thanks to the Cameron Martin theorem, is the measure that allows us to discover that the discounted price process is a martingale. So it is the risk neutral measure. And under Q that we have obtained using the exponential martingale of parameter sigma, what we have? We have that thanks to the two fundamental theorems of asset pricing. First, it is not possible to have an arbitrage, and this is the first theorem. And second, since we are assuming our markets to be complete, the risk neutral measure Q is unique, so it's the only risk neutral measure we will play with. Okay, our goal is to price securities using the Black and Scholes and Merton theorem that we are going to discuss in a minute. But what type of securities? For example, options. So the question is, what is an option for us? Probabilistically speaking, it is a very simple object. It's just a non-negative random variable that is measurable with respect to the natural filtration generated by the price process. Or if you want, in this very basic setting we are considering for the moment, since we are assuming the prices to be uh, geometric Brownian motion, we can say that the natural filtration is the natural filtration generated by the geometric Brownian motion and even simplifying by the Brownian motion itself. Now, an option is therefore a non-negative random variable that we can express as a function of the price process, usually, but not necessarily, evaluated at maturity. So, for example, we will start with vanilla options, and in the set of vanilla options we will consider European options. In European options, actually, the value is just the value at maturity. So the value of the option will depend on the value of the price process at maturity. So at time, capital T. The Black and Scholes and Merton theorem then requires the definition of two important characteristics for the quantities we play with. One is the concept of admissible portfolio or admissible strategy, and the other is the concept of replicability of an option. A portfolio is said admissible if it is self-financing, if the corresponding discounted value VT tilde is always non-negative, and if the supremum of that discounted value is square integrable under the risk neutral measure. From now on, in our discussion, we will only consider admissible portfolios. For what concerns replicability, an option is said replicable if its payoff at maturity is equal to the final value of an admissible strategy at maturity. In other words, our option H must be square integrable under the risk neutral measure. It is not difficult to observe that this is guaranteed for all the simple options we will price together. And finally, the Black and Scholes and Merton theorem. This theorem is pivotal and is not, as many people tend to believe, just the very simple pricing formula that you get for a European call, for a European put, but also for other type of options. No, the theorem is actually an extremely important result that gives us the recipe to replicate the value of an option 
via an admissible strategy. The point is, I want to evaluate something, the option, that can be difficult to uh, play with directly, so I'm able to build an admissible strategy that mimics the behavior of the option and that I can use for pricing purposes or in other fields for hedging and so on. So it's an extremely important theorem and it's important to understand that is not the pricing formula. It's the tool that we can use to reach the many pricing formulas. The theorem states the following. Any option H, which is a non-negative FT measurable random variable, square integrable under the risk neutral measure Q, is replicable by the means of an admissible strategy. So we can actually replicate the option and the value at time small t of any replicating portfolio theta is equal to the discounted uh, expectation, the discounted conditional expectation on the Q of the payoff of the option when we condition with respect to the information at time small t. In other words, the value of the option at any small t corresponds to the value of the replicating strategy. This is extremely important. The proof of the Black and Scholes and Merton theorem is not difficult. Once we can rely on the machinery we have been developing in the last lessons, and once we know the two representation theorems we have considered in lesson 5. We split the proof into two parts. We start by assuming that the option H is actually replicable. That means that there exists an admissible strategy, a couple theta t0 theta t, so a combination of shares of the risk-free asset and risky asset. Remember that we just use these two types of assets and their combination is able to reproduce the option. It means that at time t we have that the value of the portfolio vt is just the sum of theta t0 as t0 and theta t as t. And since this is an admissible strategy that replicates the option, we have that the value of the portfolio at maturity needs to be equal to h to the payoff of the option. Now, if we move to the discounted value, so we discount vt, we have the quantity vt tilde that simply becomes what you see on your screen once we assume the standard rescaling of the risk-free asset. And since the admissible strategy needs to be a self-financing portfolio, this strategy also satisfies the equation 3.6, which is a condition for self-financing behavior. Under the risk neutral measure Q, we know that the soup of the discounted value process vt tilde is square integrable and this comes from the fact that we are considering an admissible strategy and this is one of the requirements. Moreover, if you look back at equation 3.6, we can represent the process vt tilde as a stochastic integral that involves the process wt. The process WT is a burning motion with drift mu minus r over sigma under the physical measure, but it behaves as a standard running motion under the risk neutral measure Q, thanks to the Cameron Martin theorem. Therefore, it follows from all these facts that the discounted price process, the discounted value process, VT tilde, is a square integrable martingale under the risk neutral measure Q. Now, it is just a matter of substituting the back, the definition of discounted value process, rearranging the terms and find out that we can express Vt as the expectation on the Q of the exponential of minus R times capital T minus T times the payoff of the option H conditioned with respect to the information contained in the element of the filtration stopped in small t. This means that our portfolio actually replicates H. In order to complete the proof, what we want to find 
is that the thought folio actually exists. That it is to say that our strategy that allows to replicate the option H is there. This is the main question. What we want to find in detail is nothing more than two processes, theta t0 and theta t, such that when we combine these shared processes with the prices, we actually have the condition we want to uh, guarantee. Now, here the trick is to use a sort of reverse engineering. Now, the first thing is to notice that on the queue we can define the process mt, and this process is a square integral martingale. The proof of that is left to you as an exercise. If this is the case, then the martingale representation theorem guarantees that there exists an adaptive process ks such that we can essentially uh, represent our martingale mt as the sum of a value m0 plus an eto integral that involves the process k and the Brownian motion, the Q Brownian motion W. Now, the strategy we are looking for can be defined, as you see on your screen, essentially theta t0 depends on the martingale uh, quantity mt, while theta t is given by the ratio of the process kt and sigma square, the price process st tilde, so the discounted price process. Now, what we can easily verify is that this strategy is self-financing and its value at time small t is given by what you see on your screen and that corresponds to the conditional expectation at time small t, so with the information stopped at time small t, of the exponential of minus r capital T minus t, the payoff of the option. Now, this tells us that actually uh, vt is nothing more than a non-negative random variable, which is square integral, whose soup is square integral on the q, and such that its value at maturity corresponds with the payoff of the option. In other words, we have proven the second part of the theorem, and our proof is complete. I want to close this first part of the lesson by asking you to spend some time on exercises 8 and 9. They are very important for the rest of the course.